been missing for more than seven years. Today, detectives made a devastating admission. They are now looking for William Tyrrell's remains. A new search is underway on the mid-north coast, police acting on fresh evidence, hoping to finally answer the question, what happened to the little boy in the Spider-Man suit? Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Miniwatch. And seven years after the boy in the Spider-Man suit went missing, the mysterious disappearance of three-year-old William Tyrrell was making headlines again last week. And almost everyone in the media was pulling out the same old cliché. Tonight, a stunning new twist in Australia's biggest mystery. Tonight, a twist in the William Tyrrell case. There's been a shocking new twist in the William Tyrrell case. So, what kicked off the latest twisting frenzy? And how should the media behave in cases like this? Tonight, we're going to look at how New South Wales police have used the media to put pressure on suspects since William Tyrrell went missing in September 2014. And we'll look at the damage that trial by media can do to people who are wrongly accused. So, let's start at the beginning with last Monday's press conference where police announced that they were launching a massive new search at the house where the boy went missing. We're anticipating two to three weeks of work. In that time, there'll be hundreds of police officers and other people engaged. Um, there's a number of locations and a very high-intensity search being planned. That evening, with police search teams already in action, cameras and reporters from all the networks were out on the scene near Kendall State Forest. For the first time, outside specialists are being brought in to help with the search. That includes an archaeologist and water expert. Officers determined not to miss a single clue. And just as desperate to miss no clues were the Sydney papers, who served up fresh titbits for their readers next morning. Tyrrell Twist. A suspect in the disappearance of William Tyrrell has had a child removed from her custody and an AVO sought against her. At this stage, the telly and others weren't identifying the so-called suspect, but if you matched that report with the Sydney Morning Herald, it was obvious who was being accused. Police seek AVO against Tyrrell's foster parents. And on radio, the New South Wales Police Commissioner was narrowing it down even further by telling Ben Fordham... There is certainly one, one person in particular that we are looking closely at. And by next day, just about all the media were making it clear that police suspected the foster mother. Ex-detective, now criminologist Terry Goldsworthy, was shocked that the media was being used to point the finger. The fact they've come out and said that so openly, uh, and you're talking about the Commissioner down saying this, I think is a deliberate strategy by them to put a lot of pressure on someone. Well, that's it. Are they trying to smoke someone out here, do you think? Yeah, look, I think they are. The media is a very powerful investigative tool. And on 2GB, another criminologist was also taken aback. I am quite surprised at how much information is coming out. It is quite unusual to, to be getting as much as we are. Um, but obviously, strategically, the police think that this is the right way to engage. And if pressure on the suspect was what police were after, the media certainly delivered. Although child protection laws and a suppression order make it illegal to identify the foster parents, the Sydney Morning Herald was soon knocking on their door and talking to neighbours, with one woman admitting... I didn't realise that they lived so close to us. She certainly does now. And the TV cameras had already got the foster mum walking in the street near their North Shore home. Meanwhile, on a current affair, we were seeing the couple being interviewed by detectives back in 2014. This footage was filmed soon after William went missing during what's known as a walkthrough at the home where he was last seen alive. I then said to I said, well, where is he? Where, 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 where's he gone? She said, he was, he was here five minutes ago, here five minutes ago. And soon, the telly was telling us to expect the new search would bring rapid results. Detectives hunting for tragic little William Tyrrell believe they are close to cracking the country's most baffling missing child case. So, what did the police now believe had happened? The media were privy to that too, with a genuinely shocking twist that it may have been an accident. Did he die in a fall? Search begins under balcony. And a theory that the foster mother may have covered up such an accident by driving the dead child away car seized in William Tyrrell investigation was driven by his wealthy foster mum on the morning he vanished. But several stories admitted there was not enough evidence to charge the foster mother and what the police apparently had seemed pretty thin. Although it was enough for a telly front page splash about a crucial piece of evidence and this double page spread inside posing the question... A cute pic or just a barefoot lie? 
So, what was the crucial evidence supposedly showing the foster mother had lied to police? She said he was wearing shoes because of the bindies in the lawn or in case he stepped in dog droppings. It is now believed that there were no bindies at the property and the family dog was dead. Wow. The police will need a lot more than that to mount a case in court. Or indeed to defend a defamation action. Even if the telly was quick to tell readers, no doubt to please its lawyers. The Daily Telegraph is not suggesting the foster mother is guilty, only that police are investigating. Yeah, right. And perhaps the police do have a real lead. But if it does all come to nothing, do not be surprised. Because there have been 600 persons of interest in the Tyrrell investigation and the media have told us regularly, and as recently as two months ago, of new twists and new suspects. There's a disturbing twist in the mystery of William Tyrrell. William Tyrrell bombshell, a fresh twist in the investigation into the missing boy. There's been another twist in the William Tyrrell case. There have been so many twists and turns in this case over the period of seven years. In fact, six suspects have been named and shamed by the media in the seven-year investigation, starting with the local tradesman, Bill Spedding, who had quoted to fix the washing machine on the property. Did you take William Tyrrell? No. Do you know who took William Tyrrell? No. The police let it be known that Spedding was a person of interest, and the media soon had him as their prime suspect. Person of interest. Police swab and quiz local tradie over missing boy. Crime scene. Bill Spedding drives his van past the search site yesterday morning. Spedding was in the hot seat for months as police searched his house and van, dug up his yard and drained his septic tank, with cameras there to film every move. And the media also bailed him up in the street. What do you want to say to the Terrell family? In 2016, Spedding was made to look even more guilty when New South Wales police arrested him for historic sexual assault of two young girls in Victoria in 1987 and did so in plain sight of the media who just happened to be there. Refused bail, Spedding was jailed for eight weeks, then released to face another media scrum. How was jail, Bill? But when the historic assault case finally came to court in Ballarat, the prosecution withdrew the charges and Spedding walked free. And all this time, he had in fact had an alibi on the morning that William vanished, he was with his wife in a cafe 20 minutes away and then at a school prize giving. That alibi was confirmed at the coronial inquest in 2019. But by then, as he told Four Corners, his life was ruined. We've basically got to restart over again. But the, the thing is that the publicity was worldwide. It wasn't just New South Wales, it was Australia and worldwide. And uh, that is uh, damage that can never be um, repaired. Bill Spedding sued the Daily Telegraph and Daily Mail for defamation and settled out of court for a substantial sum. He's also sued the New South Wales Police for $1 million, with the hearing scheduled to go ahead next year. But Spedding is not the only one who's been accused by police and media. Evil Web Exclusive. In 2015, there were two new names. Seniors groups linked to Hunt for Will. Convicted pedophiles Paul Bickford and Anthony Jones. The next prime suspects belong to a local social group called GAPA, or Grandparents as Parents Again, which the media suggested was linked to a pedophile ring. Two pedophiles who are persons of interest in the case of missing William Tyrrell may have met up on the day he went missing. In early 2016, Bickford and Jones were both facing charges of indecent assault involving two different 11-year-old girls. And when Bickford appeared in court, he was naturally a target. But you are a convicted pedophile. Yeah, I am, but that doesn't mean I'm, I, we run a pedophile ring. People think you should be living in jail. Yeah, well, maybe. Bickford and Jones have not been charged over Tyrrell's disappearance and are presumably no longer suspects. Next in the media spotlight was Paul Savage, a neighbour who lived across the road, who was called as a witness in the Tyrrell inquest in 2019. And he too got the full treatment with this encounter on Nine's A Current Affair. Get away with that bloody thing, mate. No, I no, don't need your know. rubbish. This is Paul Savage. Why would they ask you to come to the inquest with a lawyer, do you think? As I say, you'll have to find that one out yourself. I don't know myself. Savage, who is now also contemplating suing the police, was also never charged. And the same is true of a fifth person to get the prime suspect treatment, Frank Abbott. Six witnesses, one dirty old man and a new person of interest. 
twist in William Tyrrell case as all eyes turn to a caravan-dwelling pedophile. Seven was still pointing the figure at Abbott only a few weeks ago. A convicted pedophile who lived close by has no alibi for the day the toddler disappeared. And Seven's exclusive was this. Now a former friend of Abbott's has spoken out. Quite a while, about three months, he was always saying, oh, they know where I was on the Thursday. I got my pension out on the Thursday. And after hearing that for so long, I thought I'd look the day up that he went missing. And it was the Friday. Abbott is now in jail for unrelated sex crimes, but he was never charged over Tyrrell's disappearance. And nor was this man, Derek Nichols, who briefly attracted the attention of the Daily Telegraph. Perv pianist investigated. Tyrrell probe turns to child porn fiend. Exclusive. So, what's the chance that the police and media's case against the latest person of interest will also come to naught? The foster parents have said repeatedly they had nothing to do with William's disappearance, as they did in this interview with 60 Minutes in 2015. And I walked inside. And I walked past his room. I just... I had no legs. I just collapsed. We had to go back to our house, our family, without, her, without him. It's just, it was heart-wrenching. The journalist behind that interview was Michael Usher, who's now at seven. And last week, he expressed surprise that the foster mother is now a suspect. I'm deeply shocked and very conflicted by what is going on, Mark. Um, I've known the family for quite some years when I did that interview with them, obviously met with them for many days and weeks beforehand, have kept in contact with them. And, Mark, in the time that I've spent with them and kept in contact with them, they've only ever held the line. I've never seen a crack in their story that they were determined to find who took William. And um, certainly, and I've spoken to each of them individually over many, many years, I've, I've never seen any different version of that story. And more recently, the parents told Channel 10's podcast series, Where's William Tyrrell, that in relation to the police investigation... We have nothing to hide. We gave them everything. Also casting doubt on the latest police theory was Gary Jubilin, who ran the Tyrrell investigation for four years and was sledged last week by the New South Wales Police Commissioner for leaving it in, quote, a bit of a mess. On Thursday, he told Ben Fordham that the foster mum was a decent human being and he had seen no signs of her being involved in William's disappearance. I basically ambushed the parents and then I interrogated the parents and I formally interviewed the parents and then released the parents with a covert operation running. They were again eliminated. So, apart from speculation, what is there for the media to go on? Not much, but thanks to the police strategy of allowing access to the search, we've had plenty of material for TV, with the cops helpfully providing vision of the car, once owned by William's foster grandmother, being taken away to the lab, and live crosses to the search team for even the smallest development. Danica, there appears to be a potentially significant breakthrough happening right behind you now. I'm just going to show you exactly what's going on right at the moment in the background here. What you can see is a number of officers paying particular attention to one part of the soil. It is gripping stuff. And what did they find? Well, 10 News had all the details. A heart-stopping moment. Police found a piece of red stringy fabric was it part of William Tyrrell's famous Spider-Man suit he was wearing when he vanished? Officers believe this is his graveyard. Detectives compared the find to a sample suit. And while not convinced either way, they bagged two pieces of the material to be sent away for further forensic testing. But the short-lived excitement soon faded, with suggestions the police had discounted it. On Friday, the media claimed another breakthrough after police spent three hours draining the local creek, with the Daily Mail capturing the moment a piece of blue cloth was found and calling it a mysterious discovery. And the media circus will ramp up another notch tomorrow when the foster parents appear in a Sydney court to defend a charge of common assault of a child who is not William, with Seven News warming up for the hearing last Wednesday in its primetime bulletin. Miley Hogan is at Hornsby Court for us tonight. Miley, when are they due to appear there? A live cross to an empty court six days before the foster parents are due to appear. It is absurd. And after that, more pictures of the couple outside their family home. Is there anything that you would like to say about the investigation? No doubt the pressure and the pursuit will continue. But if the police turn up nothing, what then? Criminologist Xanthi Mallet told The Herald this weekend it's going to be highly problematic for them, them being the police, adding that she finds their theory 
a little inconceivable and incredible, to be honest. But it will also be highly problematic for the media who've pointed the finger at the foster mother, because as Caroline Overington observed in the Weekend Australian, half the world thinks she maybe killed the boy. You can expect to see some big defamation payouts if the police do not deliver. So, what should the media have done? Put simply, be more careful and less credulous, and don't convict anyone until the evidence is in. Journalist Neil Mercer, a 40-year veteran of police and crime reporting, told MediaWatch... It's very disturbing that police have singled out the foster mother, in effect saying she's guilty of something in relation to William, with no evidence presented publicly. And adding... The Tyrrell case needs some context and a healthy dose of scepticism about what seems to have developed into some sort of New South Wales Police public relations campaign. That is good advice, even if it is too late for the media in this case. With the police search and forensic testing expected to go for several more weeks, stand by for a lot more speculation. That's all from us tonight. There's more on our website where you can stream and download the programme. And don't forget Media Bytes every Thursday online. But for now, until next week, goodbye. Goodbye.